Miami. State of Florida has asked us to disclose our sexual crimes to you. We were bad, but now we're good. We're moving into your neighborhood. Scroop my nipples! Scroop them! Scroop those nipples! You better scroop them right now! Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone, episode 128! 128. 128. Here we are, back in the mushroom, my friends. Back in the shroom that mushes. You know. I know. You see the mushrooms, you know we're back in business, folks. Got the microphone. We got the, the, the air vent blowing air, but hopefully you can't hear it. I don't think you can. I also got a fucking dynamic banter Halloween edition shirt. Look at that. Steve Zag Marosa and uh, Mike Falzone. Congratulations. You guys got any <laughs> bags of bird ham in here? Uh, Janice, what is this? What the f is this? Huh? You give me a strawberry Perrier in a can, not even open in my mug, in my whitest sneakers mug. Janice! You couldn't even pour it in? Look, here's the thing, folks. I recorded this episode already here. But I f the fucking microphone was acting silly. So I didn't get any audio. I only got audio from the fucking camera. Which you know how shitty that is from the camp editions. And Janice didn't even have any water supplied for me in that episode. So, I said, and that was last night when I recorded it. So I said to myself, I'm going to re-record this. No more half ass in this shit. Oh my god, it's going to fit in the cup. Janice. Why couldn't you have done that yourself? Ooh, it's strawberry. It's not a bad flavor, but it's not the best. It's not the best, Janice. No, put it over here, Janice. Come on, Janice. I am sober, you motherfucking yeah. piece of shit. That's right, Janice. Here's today's, here's today's card. It's tradition around here to show you the card, but it's not tradition to show you what's on the card. But you'll find out anyway because I'll talk about it. Yeah, baby. Uh, last episode, we talked about the Valley Folk. The Valley Folk? What is this doing here? Why is this here? Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. We talked about the Valley Folk and how Lee, the fact that Lee got her ass fired. From the Valley Folk. How carnickial crazy. Um, so now, we're seeing a little bit more on the subject. Not really. I don't think we'll ever actually know what really happened. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, Janice. Those burps are sneaking up on me with their carbonation. Um... Yeah, I don't think we'll ever actually know what the fuck actually fucking happened, but um, the boys, the New Valley Folk Boys, put out a podcast titled Owning Our Mistakes. They uploaded it on my birthday, which is November 4th. Thank you. <laughs> yes, give me a cheer or something.
Thanks. I preach. Okay. I get it. Um, the Valley Folk. The Valley Folk. You know, at first it was all like, hey, Jesus, what's going on here? I disagree with your decision, but I'm kind of starting to accept it. A little bit. I don't, until I actually know what happens, I mean, what do you get, what else are you going to do? I'm sure they have great good intentions as to why they did this. You know, people are giving up on the Valley Folk because of this. And it's understandable, but I think if you're, you know, if you've been a fan of the Valley Folk and SourceFed and everything that they've ever been a part of, you feel the connection. So when Lee leaves, especially when Lee gets fired by the people that are supposed to be her friends, it's hard to just accept that and continue to watch the Valley Fucks. But, you know, you have to... Because we'll never know. I don't think we'll ever know what actually happened. So, so what I'm doing is I'm I'm gonna continue watching them. I'm not gonna stop. I still have respect for the for the guys. Still have respect for Lee, obviously. Um, but I'm just gonna continue to watch. And if eventually it gets to a point where they're not intriguing anymore, then I'll stop. But I gotta stay updated. I gotta continue to figure out what's going on here. I never will. I never fucking will, my man. Um. <laughs> yes. In my the last episode I did, fucking uh, it fucking kind of blew up a little bit, just a little bit. Not really though. I mean, it's only got two point six k views, but that's within a few days. That doesn't happen for me. That doesn't happen in my channel. I have a few videos that have like 61,000 views. But that's the highest I've ever got. And so to have a video reach pretty well 3,000 views in, you know, like four days or whatever. And then 33 comments. Like that's not something that happens on my channel. So I'm starting to see some progress here. I'm heading in the right direction, obviously. I just wish it wasn't a camp edition. And even if it was a camp edition, I wish I had this fucking bad boy and this fucking bad boy with me so the audio wasn't bad. Because when you're using audio through, you know, just simply camera microphone audio, it picks up all the little white noise in the background. And I don't like that shit, and nobody does. Nobody likes that shit. Uh, so I opened up with a sex offender video. Sex offender. Sex offenders. Um, where is it? Right here. You would think it's real. Oh, there's another video I'm fucking missing here. I just remembered. One of the important ones. I gotta find that before I forget. Where did that go? Don't tell me it got deleted. Don't tell me it got deleted. Because, oh, here it is, 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 here it is. <gasps> oh, Jesus, I thought it was unavailable. Oh, my God, for a second it said it was unavailable. And then it, then it was available, so. Ah, I love re-recording episodes because you get little flashbacks of what you did. Because I recorded the whole episode. 60 minutes. 60 minute episode woo and now i have to redo it fan fantastic let me just check the audio wow it's doing great sex offender video 
these people were sex offenders. And then the, 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 the judge was like, hey, you're going to have to make an embarrassing video to, to re, re, recant your claims here. To make you look, to let everyone know that you're a f offender that sexes. Obviously, it's fake, but it's still funny and it can definitely be believable. I'm saying obviously it's fake because obviously it's fake. There's no way this is real, but it is funny, so why don't we continue here? You know, we're trying our best to be functioning members of society. We're not here to start no trouble. We're leaving here to do the sex offender shuffle. I'm Larry Art Howard, and I'll refrain from touching my neighbor's kids again. What I did was not too kind, but I'm a nice guy you'll come to find. I've got a He's backyard a nice guy. and a real nice pool. Y'all should come over for a barbecue. Barbecue. We can make some cold <laughs> drinks in my blender, but do keep in mind that I'm a sex offender. Vernon Douglas is my name. My battery arrest is what brought me fame. But there's much more to know about me. I love to dance and I love to ski. I zip and zoom on through the snow. Just strap on my boots and watch me go. But I can't ski until December. Till then I'm just a sex offender. I'm Charles Dolan, dropping rhymes. I've been arrested seven times. See? There's no way it's real. Obviously, there's no way it's real. I'm not going to show the whole thing. If you want to watch it, you can go to Kenny and 96, 967 others. Asshole Calamity. At Asshole Calamity. Well, actually, he's replying to this redneck fishing video. So if you go to Unusual Videos, <laughs> find the redneck fishing, scroll to the comments, and then you'll see it. Would you like to see the redneck fishing? I think you can already figure out what's, what it's going to be. Fuck I wasn't me. planning on Get him, Jim! See? I mean... You could, you could, you could have predicted what that fuck, what the fuck that was. You could have! Let's talk about Logan. Paul and KSI for a second here. Logan Schmall and Schmeas Schmai. Logan Schmall and Schmeas Schmai. <laughs> now guess what, folks? Uh, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, and, and I've said I've said it before, and I've said I've said it again, and I keep saying that. But I never thought I would, I would turn into a somewhat of a fan of Logan Paul. I'm I'm enjoying his content now. The guy has changed from what he used to be. We all know what he did. You know, I don't have to mention what the fuck he did cuz I'm sure he doesn't want that anymore. You know, besides the thing that you're actually thinking about right now that he did, there's other things that he did, but it uh, you know, that's in the past cuz people change. No one likes to accept the change anymore. They want, as soon as something controversial arises, people are like, okay, end his career, end him, I don't want him anymore, or her. Get him off the platform. But no, he survived, he moved past it, and he's, uh, he seems like a pretty cool dude now. He seems pretty, he seems pretty decent. Although, you know, I don't know him in person. I just know him from mostly his podcast, Impulsive, which if you haven't checked that out, I actually recommend it. I actually do. Never thought I'd say that, but check out, just, 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 you know, just check out the Impulsive podcast. They claim it's the number one podcast in the world, which, uh, you know, they're obviously just saying that, but it's a, it's a, it's good. I like it. He's you know he's not being a big goofball showboater in the podcast. He's just being himself, and he asks he asks decent questions sometimes. Sometimes he doesn't say much, but sometimes he does. And Mike, the other guy on the show, his best friend, he's actually pretty cool as well. Why isn't this? Oh. And he 
the thing about him though is that he constantly talks. <laughs> he doesn't stop talking, that Mike fella. But that's fine. That's what you need on a poop cast, right? You need to constantly spit words out your mouth. So last year, I think it was, maybe a year and a half ago, something like that, uh, KSI and Logan had a boxing match, and it was amateur hour. Big, big time. But they did it, and it turned out to be a draw, and they had headgear and, and something else, some other type of glove. I'm not a boxing, you know, fanatic. Like I, I'll, I've gotten into it simply through Joe Rogan, mostly UFC, but boxing as well. So I know a tiny sliver of it, but not a lot. Um, but you could tell just by watching that that it was amateur hour. They obviously didn't know what they were doing, just comparing it to other boxers. But now they've been training for a year steady, and they are both classified as professional boxers now I guess I don't know that's what they say that's what they claim anyway um but it seems like this fight is going to be much better than the last one because they actually know a thing or two about what they're doing now the only problem I have is the fucking press conference I watched the the new the latest one that was just just done on the seventh there or the, yeah, the seventh. And fuck me, is it ever goddamn cringy? It's so unbelievably cringy. Everything about everything they say, no one is like cheering or clapping. At one point, Logan gets up. Well, when Logan gets up on the stage to have his turn to speak, he's like, the first thing he says is, uh, I don't have a lot to say, blah, blah, blah. Does anybody have any, can anybody, can anybody give me some questions so I can get this thing started? And literally no one says anything and it's dead air. And he's, and then he's like, really no fucking questions. <laughs> it's still nobody gives him a question. It's just fucking awkward. I should have fucking put some timestamps in. Fuck. What was I thinking? But then, and then you know, they're like having the stare down, and they're they're just like whispering to each other for what feels like five minutes, and then KSI just pushes Logan, and he's like, "Oh, was there a mosquito in the room?" It's just so fucking cringy. As much as I like the guy, he d they don't they don't they're bad at these press conferences. The press conferences are huge and well done and well put together by the DAZN or whatever, D-A-Z-N, but they're just awkward to watch. Very, very, very awkward. And then KSI says something like, uh, I put my blood, sweat, and tears into this, and then Logan's like, I thought you said you don't bleed. And he's like, what? I thought you said you don't bleed. And he's like, I don't. He's like, well, how do you put your blood, sweat, and tears if you don't bleed? And he's like, internal blood. And then Logan goes, what's 11 times 11? That's just... It's too awkward. I can't even watch it. It's not, it's not done properly. It's not like watching fucking Conor McGregor up there. He knows what he's doing. It's just so awkward, but his uh, podcast is not awkward at all. So go watch that. So I have, a, I, have one, I have, I actually have a little clip here. Uh, KSI was getting interviewed, and stuff. Something happens. So let's just watch. Now that camp's over, I'm ready, and now I can start the the shit talking again. So, <laughs> as soon as I, I start, he stops. So, says it all, really. You're pretty good at the trash talk. I gotta hand it to you. Yeah. So, <laughs> what just happened? There he is. Right hey, what's up, bro? Okay, man. <laughs> Wait till Saturday, bro. You're a pussy. Wait till Saturday. Um, okay. <laughs> now that camp's over. 
That was actually, that wasn't cringy at all. I thought that was kind of funny. It's cringy on KSI's part because KSI is like talking about shit talking. And the girls interviewing him is like, you're actually a pretty good shit talker. And he's like, well, yeah, you know, now that, uh, now that I can't shit talk, I'm going to be all about it. And <laughs> Logan pokes his head out and he's like, you're a pussy, you're a pussy. <laughs> He's got a little smile on his face. And KSI doesn't even say anything. He doesn't say anything. It's just all around awkward. I feel like if they're going to do this, they should just go all in, say whatever the fuck is on their mind, and just, you know? There's too much awkward silence, and there's too many awkward comebacks because they're obviously nervous being on stage, you can tell. <laughs> So, they should, you know, they should have practiced or something. Or learned from the last time they did it. Because even last year during the press conference, it was even awkwarder. Is that a word? Awkwarder? Aquaman! Um. I need more sound bites. I need more fucking sound bites. I need more fucking sound bites. Sound bites. Sound bites i need a sound bite uh okay one more thing about logan paul here they're fighting in the staples center okay the staples saunter now people have already talked about this h3 has already talked about it but i'm gonna touch on it a little bit here okay okay how many minutes are we in 23. Mmm. The Staples Center. Okay, so here's here's a zoomed in look here. We've got the ring right here. This is where they're fighting. Boppity boopity. This is where they're fighting. And this is where the media goes. You see this? So all the cameras, all the photographers, they're taking pictures this way. They're right next to the ring. They're fight they're 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 snapping schnoopels. Okay? Uh, now the Staples Center, if you don't know, which you should know, is like is it, it's a it's a it's a popular place. All kinds of events happen there, major events, major UFC events, and Logan and KSI are there. Now, if we just zoom out here and take a look, see, look how big it is. You see that? That's a big fucking arena. I don't remember how many it holds, but l let's just take a look here. So, see all this gray area. All this gray area. This is all of the sold tickets. Okay. All this blue. Still open. Not a single ticket seat sold. So. <laughs> what we're seeing is that people are just buying the cheap tickets. Because these are all the cheap tickets. You, you start to come in closer to the ring. That's when it starts getting expensive. Upwards of 500 to fucking 5 grand. Who knows? I don't know, but it's expensive. And even on the outer edges, we still got some seats available out here. So I'm wondering, the, the, you know, the day of the fight, which is Saturday, for me, tomorrow, I don't know when I'm uploading this, but are these seats going to get sold? And if they don't, <laughs> I mean, we got the media right here. So they're going to be taking pictures and video and there's going to be empty seats. They're not going to, you're not going to see these people up here. So it's going to be like they're fighting with without an audience. Although they did sell a lot. This is still a lot of seats that they sold, but you know, it's not you want people around the ring, my dudes. <laughs> they don't have it. Mike from Impulsive Podcast and his own show, uh, Night Shift, he doesn't want Logan to continue boxing. He wants him to keep his fucking fingers in, in, the, in, the, in the YouTube community and he even said music. I don't know, man. Look, I, I definitely think Logan needs to stay in the, in the, the, you know, the online media world. 
through through videos and whatnot. Um, but I don't know about the music thing. But as for the boxing thing, I don't know, man. Because Logan kind of seems like he wants this now. He's actually dedicating himself to it. He's not going to parties. He's not. He's not even having sex with women. Because he wants that testosterone. But the thing with boxing is that you, you know, brain damage. Pussy. <laughs> you can end up with brain damage. Brain damage. Maybe he wants that. Maybe he wants brain damage. Maybe he needs a brain Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, there's not a lot I gotta say more about Logan Paul. Are you gonna watch the fight? Are you gonna go to the Staples Center and watch the Low Jan Paul fight? And are you voting for Logan Paul or are you voting for KSI? I'll tell you this, the first time I knew they were fighting, I was, I was on KSI side just for the fact that, you know, I wasn't, uh, I had no, I had no use for Logan Paul. You know what that means? Nothing. The Dundies. The Dundies. Yeah, okay, okay. It's early in the morning and I am tired because I had to re-record. You know this. This guy. This is actually the video I opened up with when I recorded this the first time. Little fun fact. When you lose Ertzel in a crowded place. Uh, just by looking at the thumbnail of this, I think you can predict what's going to happen. S to, a, to a certain degree, you can predict. So why don't you go ahead and predict it in your brain right now, and we'll hit play in three seconds. One, two, three. Här är Jerusalem så är idag mer än hälften av alla förskolebarn barn. Här är Jerusalem. It was funny. I've seen it too many times now, so it's not funny for me anymore. <laughs> it's still funny. She doesn't realize until the last second. She takes a peek right about here. Da doop. Oh, I'm on camera and I'm missing teeth. And I'm looking for Ertzel. Better get out of here. And she looks disappointed in herself. She's like, shit. I'm on camera. Close my eyes, turn my head, get the fuck out of here. But this guy, he's loving it. So good for him. Här i Jerusalem så är idag mer än hälften av alla förskolebarn barn. Damn, she is like... I mean, I don't want to be mean. But... You know... We're all thinking it. Like, she is... Who's Ertzel? Is that her husband? What is he, what is what is, what does he look like? Or is Ertzel Well, who knows? Maybe Ertzel is her caretaker. Should I stop this? Maybe I should. No, it wasn't in my ear. It was scratching the top of my ear. Jesus Christ. Don't, don't assume stuff, my friend. My hair. My derriere, is the audio still working? Now I'm all paranoid. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, yole, 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 lulula. Okay, this one. This one we spent a little bit of time on. In the original episode of 128, I spent a little bit of time on it. So here we have... What I... What I figured was an airport because I'm seeing luggage everywhere and you know kind of like indoor restaurants so it could be a mall 
it's either a mall or an airport. And, you know, this is just like an area that sells luggage or it's... I think it's a mall. I think it's a mall. But we've this is our subject right here. This guy in the blue shirt, black shorts, and the cell phone. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to play it through halfway real quick here and just keep an eye on them and then we'll we'll discuss and there we go so the thing happened if you didn't see what it was um why don't we scrub through this here so he's walking He's on his cell phone. He's taking some steps. Boppity boopity. Everything seems okay here. Chunk chung. He's walking. Doop. Take a look at the ground here as he steps away. Yup, yeah, yup. Yeah. Look, it happens once more here. Wow. If we watch it in real time, take another look. The guy leaves a couple nuggets behind. Okay, he's shitting and walking. He he turned it on the ground, and it's it's as though he didn't even notice. Just two pieces, three pieces of shit fall out of this guy's pants, and he doesn't notice. All right, just drops him, lets him go. Maybe he does know what's happening, and he's just trying his hardest to. To not give a shit. Now, now, also something I noticed, which is disgusting, like, look at his leg here. His right leg. As the shit drops, here we go. You can't really see it. It's hard to see. It's such blurry footage. This guy's got a mean brown streak on his leg. He pooped his pants but the poop fell out oh, I'm gonna puke <laughs> I can feel it coming anyway there's more to this video it's not just that so let's start from the beginning Doug drops his nuggets here we go white shirt man whoa <laughs> oh boy it slips and shit Hurts his back. He, he's just realizing right now what's happened. He's like, oh my god, did I seriously just step and shit? And slip? I have some suspicions about this video. That's why I really want to talk about this. Uh, first thing I... What was that? First thing I notice is that the cameraman is following this, this shit master the whole time. Okay? It's as though the cameraman knows this guy's about to drop a few nuggets. See? The camera's following the guy. How did he know he was going to shit? Right? Now, he could be... Well, I don't know. How did he know he was going to shit? That's the thing. That's really suspicious. you got to be suspicious about these things. Because people are getting really good at faking, faking videos. Okay? The other thing is this there's a jump cut because we see as the guy's coming up the escalator there's a man in a black suit looking thing okay he should be the next one in line although he goes off to the right of the screen so he doesn't go in the direction of the shit so the jump cut is viable because is there here you see you go you see he goes the other way but then it jump cuts immediately after jump cut and that guy was just standing there in the escalator and he's coming up I'm coming up doesn't notice the shit slips and shit hurts his back knocks over the suitcases now if it was fake this guy's pretty good at, at making a convincing looking slip in shit Now the other thing that could be happening here is it's it's just one security camera filming this guy and then the guy filming is filming the security camera footage and he's panning with the 
he's panning on the screen. You know what I'm saying? Like he's got the he's got his cell phone and this is the screen and he's just like whoop panning against the screen. Who knows? There's a chance it's fake, but there's also it's very convincing as well that it's not fake. Because of the guy who slips in the shit. Uh, who shits and what about these people talking as well so it kind of sounds like they're in a room watching footage right listen to the people in the background at least he gets some help and who 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 cleans up the shit? The janitor? I guess he'd have to, right? Ice T is the one who reposted this, by the way. <laughs> That's who I got this from. And also, if you scroll to the comments here. Um, oh, what's he eating? What is this video? It's a gif of nothing. Okay. Where is it? It's probably way down here now. Here it is. Got a skid mark on his calf. That's how I found out about it. Because of the comments. I always scroll to the comments. Because you'll find new, new, uh, new, new things. You'll discover new things. You'll discover new things. You guys got <laughs> any bags of bird ham in here? <laughs> we ran out of bird ham. We ran out of bird ham, says Mike Falzone. Mike Falzone, on my shirt here, over here, he does stand-up comedy. He released his, I don't know if it's his first, but he released a stand-up special. Filmed in Toronto called You Got Toes and it's available on YouTube. So if you haven't checked that out, I suggest that as well. Because if, you know, if you're a fan of dynamic banter, well, you're going to, either way, Mike Falzone fan, you're going to like his special. Even if you're not a fan, I still think you'll like it. He's a, he's a pretty, he's a pretty, he's a funny guy in a, in a specific way. And dynamic banter really captures this unique form of comedy that I completely relate to. It reminds me so much of the way I interact with my friends. And so dynamic banter is not for everyone. Dynamic banter. But it is for a select group of people. And if you can get into it, it's great. And so I just want to show a quick, quick, quick clip from his special here. Francais is Spanish for French. And that's all you get. You want to watch the rest? Then go on YouTube. It's free, motherfucker. I got to upvote this. Give it a like. Give it a like. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat, Kit Kat. Um, one other thing I just want to mention is Ed Bassmaster. Funny guy, you know him. Um, what the fuck? Uh, 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 I can't, what the hell is he famous for? I can't remember the name of that video. It's driving me nuts. I keep forgetting it. Where is it? Oh my god. Oh, would you look at this? Would you just look at it? You know that guy. He's got his own podcast now. He's got three episodes now. First one was just him. Second one was Steve-O. Next one was someone else. Podcasts everywhere. Everyone's got a podcast. I jumped on at a good time because I'm at 128. Yay! I knew. I knew when I needed to jump onto this podcast wagon. That was the time to do it, and no later than that, and I'm glad I did. 
Unfortunately, I didn't stick to it as strictly as I am now. There was a few little spurts there where I was going months without doing podcasts. And that'll never happen again. Ever. No matter what. Even if my house burns down and I lose all my equipment, I'll just use my phone. That would be terrible. That would be a nightmare for me, but the podcast will always continue from here on out. No matter what. My poopoo looks like angel hair pasta. Angel hair pasta. Um, Teen Trees. Quick update. This this episode's a lot of just up, just, 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 just stuff on the internet. Uh, maybe next episode I'll talk more about other things. I'm going to be staying at the farm. You know the farm that I did episode 100 on? I'm going to be staying on that farm this whole weekend. Because i got to take care of the goats for the for those people. While they're away. And their dogs. And their chickens. So, I'm thinking of doing like some sort of skit out there with the animals. I have to, right? It's an opportunity. I'm definitely not doing a podcast outside again because it's uh, November and we're in Canada and it's cold as fuck out there in the wilderness. So that won't be happening. But they're, I'm, I'm thinking about doing a skit for sure. For sure. Okay, so Team Trees. Mark Roper. Mr. Beast. Planting 20 million trees with the help of the Arbor Day Foundation. They got the hashtag Team Trees. They want to plant 20 million trees around the globe. Are these clouds moving? Oh my god, they are. That's freaking me out. Plant 20 million trees around the globe by January 1st, 2020. They're already at 14 million. $1 $1 equals one tree. If you haven't donated, go donate. What the hell are you doing? I I donated 10 trees, I think, and then I bought a t-shirt, which is another donation of however many trees. But now I see they have they have sweaters. I I wish I would have bought a sweater. Uh but lots of people are donating. Um Toby Lutke, I don't know who that is. He donated one million and one. Elon Musk did a million. Mark Benioff did nine hundred thousand. You know, Susan Wajiki Gicky Gicky, two hundred thousand. Jack Dorsey did it twice. Mr. Beast did it twice. Alan Walker, Verizon, Pootie Pie, Poo Pie Pie. You know. Jeffrey Starr. People, people, Jacksepticeye, it's, it's a wonderful world. I feel like I gotta shit in my pants. I should go to a mall and shit on the floor. You have someone step in it. Ooh, baby, baby. I was watching my old content last night, or the night before. Wait, all videos of like the old Let's Rant, and that was that was when I started Let's Rant. I I I was young, and I told myself this is gonna be a hit if I stick to it, and I didn't fucking stick to it. The real key, like if you have an idea, if you have one of those epiphany moments where you're just like, this idea is gonna fucking blow up if I commit to it, and you feel it, and you know it's gonna be good. You have to stick to it no matter what. I didn't stick to Let's Rant, and I fucking wish I would have. Because I was watching the episodes, and as poor quality as the content is, like visually, the way I, I made every episode a little different than the last, it was a great concept. And it still would be applied to this day if I would have fucking stuck to it. I could have made it into something fantastic but that's okay because i've tried it a few times i've you know i did like this tube secular thing and um you know i've always been trying to make it on youtube but this the dgp is what is going to be 
what makes me. It is. And don't say it isn't. Because I'm sticking to this no matter fucking what. And that's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do no matter fucking what. You could go years without anything, which is what I've been doing. I've been making content since I was fucking 12. Not as often as I should have been. <laughs> and I get no views, ever. I do, occasionally. But that's the idea. You gotta stick to it. You gotta keep creating no matter what. No matter what anyone says. No matter how you feel about it. You know, you're gonna feel down because you're like... I've put out like a f fucking 100 episodes and I still have zero views on everything. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that's not what's important what's important is getting the content out and learning how to do it properly by putting the content out because you get better each episode of whatever it is you're doing whatever thing it is you're doing you get better and you just keep progressing no matter what if your content is something that takes maybe a month to make who cares? Just keep doing it. If it's quality and you can, you know, you'll get the audience eventually. And if it's something that takes a month to make, well, it's probably very high quality, which you're going to have a better chance of, of gaining an audience rather than doing it this way, what I'm doing. Where I put out more videos, you know, within a month than some people may be able to. But it's, uh, you know... It's the whole ebb and flow thing. You just gotta put the fucking time in. That's all it is. Well, time and quality and effort. You know, you learn as you go and you get there eventually. It happens. It does happen. It happens. No matter what, it'll happen. And you gotta keep telling yourself that. When, you're, when, you're, when you go to work and you're like, I fucking hate this job. All I want to do is do what I love. But I can't because I can't make any money. And so you feel like you're trapped in this job. Hate your job. Do the job, though. But whenever you have your free time, you gotta work on your content. Or whatever the fuck it is you wanna do. People give up on their dreams so easily. And I have twice, maybe three times in, in the past. But every time I keep telling myself, like, what am I doing? I guess... <laughs> Woo, baby! You can't give up on your dream. Ah, you got... You gotta stick to it. You have to. You have to. Even if you feel like, oh, I've given up on it already and it's been too long. If there's any inkling of you that says, I wish I would have stuck to this. I wish I could be doing that. Just get back into it. It doesn't matter how old you are. Well, unless you're really old. <laughs> then it's kind of like, yeah, whatever. But If you're still in your 20s, your 30s, even your 40s or 50s, you can still get it done. Whatever it is. Especially if you're in your 20s. You're not too old. You gotta do it. Even 30s is not that old. You have to. Do what it is you want to do. Because you can make it. We all can make it. You see? We all can make it. You've done your time. You've contributed to society and whatever job you were in. But you can... You you can make it happen, boy! Why? Uh, you know... It's a possibility. Lots of people will tell you it's a waste of time and you're not going to be able to sustain yourself. But that's the whole idea. You have to shrug to get the hug. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying here. You know, the struggle's part of any art. If you want to make it in the industry of, of the arts, 
whether it's, you know, and I'm not talking about painting, I mean, like, anything in art, whether it's dancing or, or YouTubing or filmmaking or, or music or whatever, there's a struggle involved. It's not like, you know, it's not like just going to college, getting your degree, applying for jobs or whatever, you know. It's, it's guaranteed if you stick to it. No matter what. As long as you keep telling yourself that, you can make it happen. No matter what. That's what makes it so satisfying and appealing and, and great. Once it happens, you're good. You did what you needed to do to get there. And it's all worth it. And you know, some people get it handed to them where they have an unexpected viral video or or someone promotes them right off the bat. But those people never last. You need the struggle to keep you motivated, to keep going, because once you make it, you'll say, okay, I never want to go back to what I was. So I need to keep doing this. But if you were just handed the subscribers because someone massive promoted you the second you made your YouTube channel, you're just going to think, oh, okay, it's that easy, huh? Whatever, I don't even need to try. And then your content will go downhill and people will give up on you and you'll never come back. So you have to build your own empire. And it takes time. Especially if you're doing it by yourself. Especially. One last thing I want to talk about is H3 Podcast. They've been doing, uh, you know, they've been doing a lot of food related stuff where they taste food and, and rank it. But they've been doing the candy t uh, tier rank list. Last two episodes because of ha Halloween. And I disagreed with pretty well everything. I actually agreed with a lot of what Ethan said. Which I didn't think I would. But I did. Um, but that, you know, a lot of that, I don't even, I don't even need to talk about this. I just disagreed with it. The fucking, the Smarties, which we call them Rockets in Canada. Those are disgusting. The Tootsie Pops are gross. Any sort of lollipop can just go. I don't like hard candy. That's the thing with candy, though. Like, everyone has their preference of candy. Some people like hard candy. Some people hate chewy candy. I love chewy candy. Some people don't like sour some people don't like the textures of candy. It's so subjective, so you can't base it off of anything. Unless you do averages with a lot of people. But it was really scattered. Like, I'd agree with, with Ian on a certain candy, and then I would completely disagree with Ian on other candy. And the candy corn, I love candy corn. I don't care what you say, I love candy corn. We don't need to talk about this. This is boring. 54 minutes. A little less than the last time I recorded this. Come. Come. Come, 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 come. Come. Uh, so you know what, you know what, folks? I think that's it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. You know the drill. Please like, Kaya. Hey hi. Hey yeah 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 yeah. You know. Hit that bell notification. Hit that bell bell caping. Hit that bell bell be get. You know what I'm saying? You gotta say that shit. Hit the bell. Hit subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff, all that stuff. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope to see you in the next one. This was the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, episode 128. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.
The other members of the Valley Folk voted to terminate my employment. What? What? It's been one week since you looked at me. <laughs> Two something and up a say gumpe. Sean bump it bump it up. Bop bop it a scoop it a bop scoop. We did it. Fuckers, we fucking did it. Cuckers. We fucking did it. We fucking did it, yeah. We fucking did it. Scooby-Day bow, shoobity bow, soup. I've got a soup in my kitchen. I've got a soup in my kitchen. Janice! You're doing great. <laughs>